either to find two positive or two negative coterminal angles. And you'll remember that there were many different options that we had. Uh, what we're going to look at here is we're going to find a positive and a negative coterminal angle. Um, and we'll, we'll see how that all shakes out here in a second. <clears throat> now, it is much easier to do this with degrees, okay, because remember coterminal just means that it's extra rotations either in the positive and the negative direction. So if we have 30 degrees as our angle, a positive coterminal angle um, would occur uh, if we add 360 degrees to this. That'll give us positive 390. That is one positive coterminal angle. We could also add 360 again, and we could get another one. Okay, But this is the closest one. Negative, we're going to subtract 330 from the original 30, so that would give us, what, negative 300? We could do it again, and that would be another one. <coughs> Excuse me. I have no idea why we're subtracting 330. Probably because it's 30. Thank you. Um, we're on a regular schedule, and for some reason that's messing with me today. I think that I was thinking the answer was 3.30, and it is Monday. So, yes, thank you for being understanding, and thank you for pointing it out, because guess what? I'm not perfect, and I know that. So, feel free. Point it out when I make a mistake. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, negative 450 degrees. Let's check this one out. When we add 360, what happens? Now, I don't blame you if you need to kind of reference your calculator for this one. Um, I would, too, just to make sure that I had the right answer. When we add 360, check out what happens. We still have negative 90 degrees. Okay, so even though we added 360, we got a negative coterminal angle. Sometimes that happens because negative 450 is more than one revolution. And that's the reason why it's still negative. So from here to get a positive, I have to add 360 again. So yeah. 270 is a positive coterminal angle. You always have to add 360. For coterminal, you always have to add 360. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, you could also, if you're in the habit of subtracting for the negative coterminal angle, okay, um, negative 810 is also a negative coterminal angle. Okay. So if you really just want to have to subtract to get your negative, you could subtract that from the 450 to get negative 810. Both of those are still coterminal angles. Okay. Let's look at a radian one. Okay, remember with the radians, we drop the pi. So we do 22 over 3. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we add 2 for the positive, so 28 over 3, 28 pi over 3 is a positive coterminal angle. We good? Yeah. Okay. Now let's subtract 2 to find a negative coterminal angle. But when we do that, it's still a positive number. So that's another positive coterminal angle, 16 pi over 3. So we've got to keep subtracting 2 until we end up with a negative number. Oh, well, do it again. We still just get 10 pi over 3. So we got to keep going. Do it again. We get 4 pi over 3. We've got a bunch of positive coterminal angles here. Finally, there's a negative. Negative 2 pi over 3. Okay? So, remember, we drop the pi. When we put it into our calculator, we drop the pi. Then we just add or subtract 2. <clears throat> turn it into a fraction. When we write it down, we put the pi back on the top. Okay? So, if, if I were asking you this on quiz, <clears throat> I would accept any of these four positive angles here as the answer for a positive coterminal angle. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I don't know why you would really have anything other than negative 2 pi over 3 that we subtracted again. But technically, uh, negative
negative 8 pi over 3 is a negative coterminal angle. Okay, you can have infinitely many coterminal angles. You can just keep going around. You can keep spinning around either direction um, for these coterminal angles. Okay. And, <clears throat> excuse me, let's look at a negative uh, radian. So for some reason, I always add first. I do the positive coterminal angle. Fraction. 5 pi over 6 is a positive coterminal angle. And if we subtract 2, we get negative 19 pi <coughs> over 6. Now, Technically, when you're dealing with radians, you can convert to degrees, average subtract 360, and then convert again, but that's just way more work than you have to do. I would rather you, you do understand that we're, technically we're adding and subtracting two pi, you just don't write it there because I don't want you to type it into your calculator. Because once you put that pi in there, it's going to multiply it out and you're not going to be able to get it back in fractional form. <coughs> Okay, um, all right, so since I want to get through the, the rest of these things, we'll practice here in a minute, but I want to go ahead and look at the next example. We'll go ahead and look at example three. State the quadrant in which the terminal side of each angle lies, okay? Now, this is, this is one of those simple things, but we need to know it for the next thing that we're going to do with reference angles, okay? So... Um, degrees obviously are pretty easy. Most people um, can uh, figure those out pretty easily. If you label your axes with 90, 180, 270, and then 0 slash 360, it's pretty easy to figure out where these end up. Okay, so positive 95 degrees is obviously a reminder quadrants are counterclockwise. You start positive x, positive y is quadrant one, and you go counterclockwise just like we measure our angles. So we've got one, two, three, and four. I use Roman numerals because that's how I learned how to do it, and I don't know, it's just kind of how most people in math do uh, number the quadrants. I'm fine if you use the actual numbers. I'm not super nitpicky over that, okay? So 95 degrees would be in the second quadrant. <coughs> now, negative, okay, you can go over here and you can relabel these in the negative direction. You've got negative 90. Well, guess what? Positive 180 and negative 180 are the same thing. 90 degrees and negative 270 are the same thing. And then, of course, 0 degrees and negative 360 are equivalent. So if we go in the negative direction, negative 135 is in the third quadrant because it is between negative 90 and negative 180. So it is in the third quadrant. Now, radians is where people tend to struggle a little bit more. But let me try and explain this to you in an easy to understand way. All right, so the way that I label with radians, obviously we have zero to start with, okay? Um, pi over two is 90 degrees, pi is 180 degrees, 270 degrees is three pi over two. Now, some people are good with fractions, some people not so good with fractions. Oh, I forgot 2 pi as well. So you may want to go back and say, well, pi over 2, that, that's like 0.5 pi, right? Um, of course, this is 1 pi. We just don't write the 1 in front of it. And 3 pi over 2 is like 1.5 pi. And the reason why I do that is because... If I'm trying to figure out where 23 pi over 6 is, I think the easiest way to do that 
is to type 23 over 6 into your calculator and it's 3.8 okay 3.83 so I've got to figure out where that lands in this whole scheme of things well if I go all the way around that's 2 right if I land on my negative x-axis that's 3 and how far beyond that do I go I go 0.8 so I'm gonna end up here somewhere there in the fourth quadrant. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. Or you could look at it after after I go one time around, then I've got three here, and this would be four point, uh, not four point five, three point five, and this would be four. So three point eight is between three point five and four. So twenty three pi over six is in the fourth quadrant. Now, you could convert that to degrees and locate it according to its degrees, but you need to be able to uh, navigate with the radians as well. Okay, so negative five pi over three, oh, I'm doing everything backwards today, negative five over three is negative 1.667. So I could go in here and label this with my negatives. This would be negative 0.5. This would be negative 1 pi. This would be negative 1.5 pi. And negative 2 pi. So what did I say? Negative 1.667. So that is between negative 1.5 and negative 2. So this angle is actually in the first quadrant. Four pi over seven, four over seven is 0.57. So a little bit more than 0.5, but less than one. So that means that is the second quadrant.